You have to stop this insane research. That thing isn't satisfied just controlling the minds of the people who watch your TV show. It's apparent you and I will no longer be able to work together. Fine with me. But wait till I tell people what's really going on around here. Now take that thing and bury it where it belongs. <laughs> Welcome back to Blackwood, the podcast that takes a deep dive into the best worst horror films of the 80s and 90s. I'm Stevie, your VHS veteran. If you're not following us on social media, you won't have seen the announcement that we are nearing the end of season one. I know, sad face, single tear. We just have two more episodes left after today's, but what a lineup it is. Next week, I'll be covering Full Moon's David Dakota directed Creepazoids with one of the funniest humans to walk the earth, stand-up legend Ursula Carlson. And then the following week for our final episode, I'll be talking all things Death Spa from 1989 with the incomparable Graham Norton. So uh, make sure you tune in for those. But to fill your brain rot shaped hole during the hiatus, we will still be putting out regular episodes on Patreon. This week, George Rainsford returns after his appearance as my very first guest on Brain Rot when we covered Chud, and as promised, we're teaming up again to cover Chud 2, Bud the Chud. So if you want to hear that and other Patreon-only bonus episodes, head to patreon.com forward slash Stevie's Brain Rot. Now then, this week we're covering 1988's The Brain, a film I'd never actually seen before but has been on my radar for some time and uh, boy was it right up my street. It is so on brand for brain rot. To discuss this ridiculous movie, I'm joined by an actress and writer who's been on TV more than Des (laughs) O'Connor. I don't know why that name came to my head. Uh, Anyway, please welcome to the show, Kerry Howard. Hello, funny lady. Oh, hello, Stevie. How are you? I'm doing all right, mate. I'm having a lot of fun. How are you? How did, I just want to know, like, what at what point in the pandemic did you think I'm going to make a podcast about really shit horrors? Like, <laughs> when was your aha moment that this is going to be something you're going to do? Well, do you know when it what? <laughs> this is the thing. I've always wanted to do this podcast. I've thought about it for a long time and I've yeah. attempted it a couple of times and then just couldn't be asked. And then the pandemic. Nothing I like a really, pandemic uh, to galvanise you, isn't ex- it? <laughs> totally galvanising, but not straight yeah. away. Not straight away at all. Like I sat for quite a good seven to eight months going, this is all right, just sitting down, not doing anything. And then it got to the point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. I've got to do something. And so I just jumped in, started doing it. And then it it sort of, it's just taken off. And now I'm like, (laughs) it's my full time. I wake up thinking about it, writing notes in the middle of the night, remembering films, all these terrible films I saw when I was a kid. um, And I just want to put other people through it. However... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what we're going to be talking about today, I had never seen before. So that was a first time I've viewing. I've never seen this film or heard of it. or I don't know any of the actors. It's so <laughs> obscure. Oh, you're so excited. That's what it is. I'm very excited. Pods are popping out of my ears. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your, if if at all, that you have, if at all that you have one, that's not a good sentence. I'm going to say that again. Uh, <laughs> what is your relationship, if any, with horror films? So... Horror films, I'm I'm such a pussy, like I, I'm terrified. I remember like going to see Jurassic Park mm. and I must have been 10. I went with my family, obviously. And yeah. as like the dinosaurs are about to go, <laughs> like that little one with the big sort of like love. That's the Dilophosaurus, thing. I think you'll find. Oh, she's fab. I mean, <laughs> seeing her now, I'm like, I love that webbed wing you have. It's really yeah. gorgeous. Um, But as... <laughs> As I was watching that moment, like it crawling out, my dad just went <laughs> like that. And I screamed the cinema oh. down. Like, like I just, I'm such a nervous Nelly. So I'm not very good with them. Jurassic I'm, Park I'm, is pretty terrifying though. Yeah. It's genuine. Um, I, I, she'll kill me for saying this. Um, 
when my mum and dad uh, took me to see it, my dad only told me this a handful of years ago. My mum leant over to him at one point, grabbed him and said, Terry, are, are they real? <laughs> she, had, she actually thought there was this, they discovered them. And the yeah. first thing they decided to do was make the movie stars. They found dinosaurs. Yeah. They're real. Let's make a film about I them. Like a documentary. It was like the Blair Witch Project. I remember, I didn't see it. I remember my brother's going to see it. And then Daniel and Russell, and then coming back green, their faces were grey. And they were yeah. like, don't see it. Um, but this is before. They genuinely thought it was a documentary. Mm -hmm. And then like a week later, it's like, it's a film, it's a film. But you, that can um, never happen again. That's the thing. Because no. back in 1999, the internet was sort of starting out. Whereas now, yeah. you, couldn't, you couldn't fool anyone because you've got Google. You just know what's Everybody real and what's knows. not. Yeah. But back then, I did it, the same. I went in. I thought I was watching stunts. people disappear and die. If, unless you were there, that can never be replicated, that yeah. feeling and that time. And that's why but that's a special watching it one. now, the Blair Witch Project, it doesn't work at all it's so bad you're just like oh my god this is so naff my boyfriend had never seen it so i made him watch it and he just thought absolute shite because so much um found footage films have come after that but they do it with the effect so, now they can do it and, better and really good actors as well so yeah, like, yeah yeah but for me blair witch still terrifies me i think yeah. because it puts me back in that place um and yeah. i just all those original feelings come back up oh yeah. it's fantastic um it's the brain <laughs> 1988 <laughs> uh yeah, so I hadn't seen it before. What What are your general th thoughts on I this mean, film? I love his eyebrows. They're amazing. <laughs> the lead guy, James, who's oh, constantly yeah. saying, hey, it's Jim. Okay, James. Jim! That, like, that really annoys him that people don't call him <laughs> James or Jim. Or then at one time he's just called Murderer. Which I was yeah. just like, of <laughs> course, as soon as you're a murderer, you, you have no name. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that's your title. Yeah, yeah. Murderer! Um, yeah. Uh, there's, I, there's so much I want to say about this film. It's just so weird. I mean, the fact the brain essentially like just eats one human and quadruples. It's like, how does yeah. that happen? And, and grow. It didn't have eyes and a mouth before it eats someone, but it just suddenly has them. I mean, it's, it's a like, rapid growth, isn't it? It's a rapid growth. And then why is it so wet? <laughs> it's all the time it's dripping. Um, someone needs some Botox all over their face, like just to take in. Like it's not working. I thought I just the whole thing was really sensational to me. I think my favorite type of low budget creature feature is when it's played completely earnestly without any yeah. self awareness. There's no winks to the audience. No. That, I mean, they're going for gold and taking it seriously. It brings me joy 100%. for the pure fact that you're watching actors play to the best of their ability the reality of battling a giant brain with teeth yeah. and tentacles yeah what, what's he battling him with at the end he's just trying to punch him with like a sponge or something yes and then luckily luckily there's a massive packet of sodium which is a lovely callback to the beginning when he's just a bloody rogue with <laughs> oh, sodium yeah. and glue <laughs> prankster oh, <James>. you shit <laughs> <laughs> uh, I yeah I just think it's everyone involved in it just really goes for it and I'd love to just I don't know how you get in that mindset each day like you have a talk with yourself before you go on set knowing what you're going to be doing yeah. and go right come on get in it take the series be there I mean I feel sorry for the actors playing the brain because there will be actors there's at least three guys Movement that, actors. That, yeah, oh, 100 percent Puppeteers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Going method on that as well. Like what, <laughs> they probably don't talk. They're just trying to do it <laughs> like like work mind control. Like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, also the questions that you have as a viewer as to when, why, and what the fuck is happening are so unapologetically ignored that yeah. it earns respect. It's like, right, that's some gumption and gall you got there. Yeah. You're not going to answer anything for me. If you really think about the film, the film is like a metaphor for James because he's just a horny bastard. He <laughs> just wants to have sex with his girlfriend. She's like, not until college. Um, and that's his main objective throughout the whole film. So essentially, like the the brain, this weird, uh, which has massive like tentacles, that, which are basically cocks coming yes, out of it. Dog penises, yeah. Dog penises, like just flailing everywhere, <laughs> and like that represents his sexuality of like he just wants to fuck everyone and he can't control himself. This is what the uh, film's about. I mean, that's whores. totally in there. I I feel like 
you're giving it a little bit more credit and <laughs> <laughs> no, I yeah, feel I'm like you're fi- I don't, I'm fi- you're finding a layer there that I don't think was intended <laughs> but I think it's very noble and sweet of you to do so I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm like, I don't want to look look Stevie you you haven't wasted my time I've, I've found something <laughs> It wasn't dead time. Really no, no, forcing no, that. That's me. blood out no. of a stone, that is. <laughs> yeah. Mind control. It's also perfect for pandemic. Like, we've been controlled by the news. I'm like, oh, my God. Dr. This is so now. No, no charisma. He's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, that actor is awful. Oh, like, what, what, Dr. Blake? Dr. No Charisma Blake. <sighs> he's like, And he plays he's... a very similar character in a very similar film called Reanimator. Um, so I think that's Brilliant. his shtick. That's, that's what he does. Shtick. And he gets his head cut off in that as well. No way! <laughs> yeah, that's his thing. <laughs> if you're in the 80s, if you need someone's head chopped off, there you go. Hi, I'm the guy. I'll do that thing <laughs> for you. I mean, James, he actually does punch his head off in one punch. <laughs> yeah. And then there's loads of, like, green glue. Because, like, like literally... About 10 minutes before he punches his face, like one of the characters, like, he's an alien, by the way. You're like, oh, oh, is he now? All right, okay, great. Which is really another really good get out clause, isn't it? For why they don't have to explain what's going on. It's like, oh, by the way, by the way, he's an alien. So you (laughs) don't need to know his purpose. (laughs) So is the brain an alien as well? Right, where did they get the brain? Is that a human brain that grew? (laughs) Tell me what's going on. Give me some information. Like, are you working together? Like. What's what's wrong with the like the hench guy with the bearded hench guy? What yeah. what what's his objective? Is that mind control? You just none of these answers. And there's why are there so many axes in Meadowville as well? There's an axe everywhere. You're like, oh shit! Oh, it's just here. Like yes. constantly. Like if you're in trouble, fuck! Oh, my trusty axe. It's just yeah. there. <laughs> you're so right. Why would you need so many? Because there's a moment when she's randomly tied up in a freezer in a new outfit um, with loads of bodies. Stunning, hang on, let's give the outfit some time. <laughs> the tie dyes and the petrol blue skirt, yeah, yeah. Thank you. She's giving me like a young 80s Margot Robbie. I so love her. Oh. Me too, she is, she is. I, she's not wearing that throughout though, so I don't know when no. she took the time to change that. I, suddenly she's and in also, it. Like their sex scene is like, did that actually happen? Because he wakes up. And then suddenly she's like, she thinks he's a murderer. You're a murderer. <laughs> yeah, they don't. They're not very clear on that. Um, right. Well, let's let's have a blow through it, shall we? I'm going to um, tell you the IMDb synopsis, Brilliant. and then I'm going to ask for yours. So yeah, IMDb okay. simply gives us this. It just says, with the help of an alien organism, I don't know where they got that confirmation from. Yeah. Uh, a man, man, brainwaves audiences through television, and a troubled high school student is determined to stop them. Uh, uh. Troubled. He has troubles with glue and sodium. Mm. Not that he's not the way. Yeah. No, no, he's not a druggie. He's, <laughs> you get some trousers, he's going to glue them to a seat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Such a prankster. Yeah, like that's uh, cool for an eight-year-old, but like for like a 16-year-old, like, have you got problems? Yeah, you say 16 as well. He's clearly 27, the actor. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's have it. Ha, huh, okay. It's about a high school kid, got that right, who ultimately <laughs> wants to bone his girlfriend. He has a penchant for... Uh, chucking sodium into toilets <laughs> toilet and gluing people to seats until he gets framed for being the town's murderer by Dr. No Charisma Blake, who happens to be an alien, uh, by trying to use mind control to take over the world with a really, really wet brain. Who eats people? Uh, but uh, don't worry, horny <laughs> Jimmy comes along and he punches Dr. Blake's head off and he makes <laughs> the brain eat sodium which explodes and and then he gets accepted to Princeton at the end. Yes, because of that, I don't really know. Yeah. Oh, it's it's it. Oh wow, like, that, that is it, very right? well done. That Thank actually you. made sense. Question mark. <laughs> it, yeah, you made me I question know. if I just like I, I just thought it was a mess and actually it was a, the clarity was and so apparent. There. Right. Yes. Yeah, so as you say, 
we meet Dr. Uh, Anthony Blake and he's he hosts a TV show called Independent Thinkers. And it's a sort of cultish, quite Scientology sort of. Yeah. And it's and he says it's to stop the suicide in um, America that's going on. Then immediately we meet this girl. I think her name's Becky and her mum's watching yes. the show. A lot happens here. A lot happens in <laughs> Becky's bedroom. And I'm yes. not talking about the decor. <laughs> oh, who has a unicorn poster at that age? Honestly, yes. grow up. <laughs> Stock Sorry. image unicorn face. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. It's, it may have a moment now, but like not at that age. Honestly. Yeah, definitely. Her whole decor is way too young for her. It makes yeah. me worried about the uh, the structure of that family life. Something totally. I mean, lilac? Lilac on the wall? <laughs> Who put lilac on the wall? I mean, if I had lilac on my walls, I would expect the weird crabby claw thing coming out at me and killing me. Like, I'd expect it for my distaste in interior design. You deserve it. She deserves you deserve what it. happens you to her. You deserve that with your lilac walls, you disgusting bitch. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I really hate bad taste. I can't stand it. Like, that would be my horror film. And it drives <laughs> oh you to god. murder. Oh my god, I can't stand it. No. But her teddy bear um, starts te- crying. crying. Gunge? Blood. Black. Well, oh, was it blood? It's black, and then it becomes, and then I'm like, oh, that's blood. Oh, right. oh I see. starts to come through. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. And then Monster the... hand comes out the TV and out of the walls. Yeah, tentacle, claw-like crabby, but then it gets a bit veiny as well, so a bit penisy. So yes. instantly you're like, oh, okay. oh, I see. Yeah. This is a teenage horror. There's a lot of phallic <laughs> semiotics going on. Nice. Um, thank you. <laughs> I, I did a semester in film studies years ago. Ooh. So you're going to use that a lot. A throughout. lot, a lot. Yeah. And, but the, all the walls are shifting as well. It feels like yeah. at this point they checked how many people uh, were free on set. Like they got the caterer to wobble a teddy bear, <laughs> yeah. the drivers pushing the wall. How many people, how many things can we get moving at once in one shot? Even Very her much hair, her overperms hair. <laughs> and her eyes. I mean, she had great expression. I will say this, like she's probably the best horror actress in that film because she really committed to it. And that's, to be honest, I think that's that's the role you want. The, uh, the oh, It's always the iconic opening scene or the opening yeah, kill, isn't yeah. it? And she does well with, with yeah. what she's given there. But And then her mum checks on her and everything has disappeared. <laughs> that doesn't last for long because th- you think it's going to be, oh, right, they're going to say she's crazy. And she's going to go, I swear it was right there. Yeah. Um, right. But then a tentacle does come out and wrap around her mum's throat. She starts yeah. stabbing the tentacle. Then we find out that actually she's hallucinating. Yeah. yeah. And she's killing her mum. And then she chucks herself out. Or well, the brain comes out of her TV and chucks <laughs> her out onto like the balcony where she dies. Uh, but you're like, but where's this brain come from? Because whenever we see the brain... It's in like a chemical like bath of of, like green (laughs) shit with loads of like electrodes like attached to it. So you're like, so it can fly and it can be away from the center. So, yeah, that's the thing that that doesn't quite add up. So there's two things that we find out the doctor is doing. So he's the actual brain is sending its super powered brainwaves through the TV. And it's eventually going to mind control the viewers. But he's also been bringing in kids to the lab hooking them up to a machine and then they're going off and hallucinating and com- and killing and killing yeah and then committing suicide well or it looks like suicide yeah but it's the brain but the brain comes out of the tv <laughs> or is that a hallucination uh, right I mean, maybe just, yeah because with jimmy he just hallucinates that he fucks people and tits. <laughs> right Right. right. I mean, there is a lovely when the brain first gets his appetite for a human and eats a human. Mm. Uh, Dr. Blake asks has a great line and he's like, well, that's food for thought. Like that's the oh. one moment that you're like, oh, very good. Very yeah. Good. The one moment that's a li- it's sent up and it's a wink to the audience. Yeah. But that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the only bit. The and that's it. Yeah. Good. That's his one reaction. Yeah. No, the you're delivery right. Delivery is <laughs> so bad. You're like, that's actually a very <laughs> funny line. And you just. Well, that's really my bug. Yeah, like, right, right. It could have been that. a real, yeah, like, a real kicker. Yeah. But yeah. Jim's at school. We meet him, and um, <laughs> right. So help me out here. So he has got a little plastic box that has the words "pure sodium" pure on it. Pure sodium. Pure. Yeah. Pure. <laughs> pure. Yeah. And it's yeah. in this little box. Um, I'm not sure that's how sodium comes packaged. 
but no, hey ho just just go with it because we need it's a marker yeah, of like he's just, of course this is what he has it's just his kit yeah not, and he flushes it down cocaine. the toilet and then all the drains in the school suddenly immediately explode and they're all Compass. just yeah yeah <laughs> but like nothing happens like no one gets chucked out of school he just gets sent to the office straight away so it's like well, what did you think you were gonna like gain from this like you're still at yeah. school <laughs> you still have yeah. were you trying to get everyone out of school and like maybe that because i was thinking it's during the school then it would have been like ah, everyone out everyone out that's probably it was get get me a couple of days off school because all because yeah. class is in session so he's not doing it for the students no. to see i know you're right it's probably that it's probably, it's probably but, uh, but again we but have to make that logic make that leap yeah and like oh he's you know wasted days because they've got to fix the plumbing plumbing <laughs> but like there's no it's just like that it's not that bad if it just makes the water go a bit fizzy you're like well we better lock this guy up into a psychiatric care like he needs right. <laughs> no like what also it's they've already thought of how the demise of the brain at the end haven't they with sodium so they're like we've got yeah. to get in that he like he knows how sodium reacts with water oh completely <laughs> so it's such done. a place though so when and when you see the sodium at your end at the end you're like oh call back like yeah, yeah. and the, the so- sodium at the end has got the same font as the pure yeah. sodium so it's the same yeah. manufacturer of sodium yeah. but it's maxi it's a maxi yeah. sodium ah. it's like you're suddenly there's different sizes you're like really <laughs> okay but yeah, yeah they want to put him in this um yeah dr blake's uh sort of facility now the thing is this was a real thing in the 80s in america they were, they were all over the newspapers and tv they had these troubled teen camps where you could you go go like hey troubled teen teen on drugs aggressive teen all this pay us 500 dollars a month and they can come and get sorted out here where they would either have it like an army boot camp um which is just violent and horrendous or they yeah. just dose them up and and completely um, subdue them with drugs. And so they're just like zombies. But these sort of rich parents would just send their troubled teens away to these places. So it's definitely playing on that. I think actually that whole Paris Hilton thing, you know, she was sent to a place like this, a reform school that she came out with recently. Because their summer holidays are so long. They're like 12 weeks that like most of the kids get sent away to camp. Yeah, true. And it's, and they literally board and they go away. And I figured, what do the parents do? Yeah, like, I mean, you've already got time. all the time when they're in school. It's just cool. the evenings you see them. <laughs> yeah, it's like, does America hate their children? That's what it's <laughs> that, that sense of like, just fuck off, just get out. <laughs> like, Supposed to help yeah. them grow and nurture. Anyway. No, but you're right. Any given opportunity, and it's like send them off. Send them and... off. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, do you not do you, do you not miss your kids like? <laughs> No. Oh, we must. It's probably important to say this is a. This is actually technically a Christmas film. Or well, it's oh, Christmas yeah. time. How There's is lots it of. <laughs> did you not I've see? It's not referenced, but all the outdoor shots. There's uh, Christmas trees and baubles in windows and stuff like that. And I thought they don't reference it. There's got <laughs> to be a good reason. So I checked, and it was released on the fourth of November, nineteen eighty-eight. So I think, as an extra marketing ploy, they just chucked a load of Christmas shit in there so that. <sighs> People would start to feel the festivities. Oh my god! If you make a Christmas film, you've got money for life, boo. Like, well, that's <laughs> that's right? what they were going for. Yeah, yeah. But they should have leaned into that a little bit more. Like, they should have dressed the brain up as Santa <laughs> with a bit of tinsel a, or something. Oh, hundred percent. If you're going to go there, go strong. Go big or go home. <laughs> like that was. And then like the the damsel in distress should have been like a hot little Santa's wife when she was for tied up. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That should totally. have been the outfit, elf's outfit. Yeah, oh, totally. Really but uh, they they sprinkled them in there. I it must have been that. purely for that release, really. I because oh. every time there's a I saw a bauble or a Christmas tree, I was like, what? This it doesn't feel relevant, and it wasn't. Turns out, no, because um, they would have had Christmas jumpers on. Yeah, that would something have solved more. It. Uh, so he goes to the facility, um, and he's put into a room, isn't he? Um, uh, and it's got Which, a two way mirror. Do we actually think that facility is that long? Or do you think the, they just the, cut, edit, and then uh, and then cut, edit? Because it just that that scene where they're showing the building, it's re- like the external music, shot. It's just it's ridiculous. Like okay, we get it's a big building, and it's just like it's about. I it feels like forty seconds of just seeing a white <laughs> building. Like you're like right, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, Got the building, still, right? Still, still, on the building. This building. <laughs> still on the building. Yeah, building. Okay, it's big. Is that what you want me to say? Okay. <laughs> Got a big facility. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really funny. Like, just do that on the loop. <laughs> 
but it's so not the it's not the well. only time it does it kind of every time we go back there it establishes it with a long shot <laughs> yeah, of outside again it's so funny I'm like, <laughs> yeah i know this building is like really big but really we know it's probably like a model size and it's like yeah, probably. really really teeny <laughs> but um, he's in there the the giant building and we meet um the female assistant to the doctor who's vivian, vivian. and as soon as you meet vivian, her great tip well, that's the thing. As soon as you meet her, you go, I think I'm going to see your breasts later. Yeah. You just know. And then as soon as you see her tits, you go, Vivian, you're going to die. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's the you know wrong rules face. of horrors. Because yeah. if you see, if a woman shows her tits at the very beginning of the horror, she dead because they always kill the whores. Right. That's the thing. You 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 know her fate the second you see her. She's got her yeah. bleached blonde hair. I go, oh, that's yeah. probably a little racy. I'm going to see yeah. your boobs and then you're going to die. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Death by tits. Always. Yeah. Uh, but behind great the, tips, though. Yeah, they are fantastic. They are really good tips. Yeah, I mean, like, if I was that way inclined, I would have paused. Oh, oh, I was just like, <laughs> like, and also it was an undershot, which is a very yes. bold shot for a breast <laughs> shot because you know, not not a lot of women have a great under tip. Usually, right. under tip, you've got stretched skin, lots of things going on there. Yeah. But she had <laughs> fantastic under tip. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> they, they sat there. They sat there perfectly. They did. I was, I was marvel. I was like, well, no wonder they. They had to film them. Yeah. They're they're a miracle. They're cracking. They're um, cracking. <laughs> they're cracking. The brain, though, at this point, so it's in the the adjacent room behind the yeah. uh, the mirror, and so it's not the size of a human brain. It's also not yet giant. It's mm. it's featureless. It's kind of the size of uh, a massive melon. Yeah, a very big melon with a spine yeah. attached to it. Right? Yes, yeah, a very greasy looking spine. Yeah. Yeah. What I like also, they don't save anything in this film. In films of this budget, um, they usually tease you a lot with their one creature prop or whatever, and then they give a, a big reveal at the end. And in this, they're like, "Listen, we've paid for this fucker, and oh we're showing God. it every five minutes." Yeah. If all right, thank you. Actually, I mean, as soon as the brain has a face, you see that face all the fucking time. I'm like, yeah. The more the thing is, the more you show it, the more it loses its power. That's why they only in the other films of low budget yeah. you show it once because you can see it and you can see the flaws and you go, oh, it's only paper mache. Yeah, like it's not real. Yeah, yeah. It, but in this, yeah, as you as you say, when as soon as they introduce the big one, it's constantly and if even if it's not in a scene, it'll just flash <laughs> like yeah. it'll just flash up on the screen and disappear flash. like a subliminal. <laughs> Like I thought, oh my God, is, is something wrong with my TV? Like I thought there was something wrong. It didn't actually make any sense when it flashed. Uh, but, but we've uh, yeah, we've seen her boobs. They've done all that. Yeah. And he's had his, he's starting to have visions. And the TV, while, he, while he's chained up, the TV monitor keeps saying, oh, hallucination. He's having a hallucination, which I thought was interesting that it yeah. can recognise when someone's hallucinating and broadcast that. This, but also on the machine, it's handwritten received brain like sca- like it, brain like, wave brain wave but it's handwritten you're like yeah. what i don't understand like yeah. that computer like an what? extra sketch yeah you're like, handwritten. yeah well vivian uh, when she's back in that room she's um she disapproves of what they're doing she says oh, oh yeah. gives us a bit of exposition saying eight there have been eight related deaths to this experiment we're doing and then the brain jumps out of the t- i don't know what it's using as leverage it jumps out of the tank onto her face and it just eats her. <laughs> it eats her. And then I then my my interpretation was that because it then then grows a face, I was like, oh, it's Vivian. Vivian is the brain. That's oh, what I thought. That would have oh, that, that would have been a nice route to go down. But no, no it's, it's just not. grown a face. It's just, it's just grown a face and it just keeps eating humans. But also the uh, Dr. Keeps Blake, he doesn't line. seem too shocked by this. It feels like was he expecting no. this to happen? It's almost like he's sedated, like he's on drugs. <laughs> he has like no reaction. Like they do a close up on him, and it's it's almost sexual. His his he's very kind of aroused. I'd say content. There you go. He does it's, a sexual smile. Hundred percent. This film is all about sex and consent. <laughs> There's something going on. Like it's it, totally it probably sex, is. So maybe that's <laughs> it's I've just on your brain. It's on my brain. <laughs> <laughs> that's not your that's not the brain in the film that's your brain i blame the pandemic the yeah, totally. pan, it's ruined my sex life it's, anyway. it's done it's done crazy things to every part of me <laughs> honestly I, my my actual i know we're talking about brains a lot but my brain yeah. is just in a completely different setting even with uh 
short term memory. It's scary. Yeah. Yeah. And that whole going into a room and going, I don't know why I'm in here. Just bizarre yeah. things have been happening. I find it very hard to concentrate on things. Mm -hmm. And now, because you can go out and see people, I'm struggling to do small talk. Like Completely. I, I, the anxiety I get, really I get now. I bored <clears throat> by it straight away when I'm in small sort of stalk situation. I'm like, I'm bored. Yeah. I'm bored instantly. I need to go home and just swipe left. This is my life. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and isn't it something like it takes 60 days to form a habit? And because we've not been seeing people for so long, yeah. that's what's happened to me. I get anxiety about seeing going and seeing people and then when I do I'm like oh I'm so I don't want to be here yeah I'm gonna go home and sit because in silence you can change in your own environment you can change your boredom you can change it like that straight away yeah. you don't enjoy the tv show you can turn it off but in in a social setting you're kind of locked into that hour time that you're with yes. someone and you can't turn them off they're on constantly streaming <laughs> at your face and you're like oh god I don't know how to talk to you anymore. Please. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be quite an adjustment. It really yeah. is. Uh, anyway, uh, anyway we're, we're, yeah. So, uh, what, what's happening? Oh, yeah, Jim's, Jim's driving home um, from, and he, uh, he has a hallucination. But he where... already knows. He already knows because he's a clever guy. Right. It's my control, guys. Yeah, he's like, oh, they're they're forcing hallucinations on people. But then he has one in the car because a tentacle comes out of the steering wheel. Yeah, this is the one that I yeah. thought was very dog penisy. Very, very. And is that when when he's with his girlfriend? He's trying to make out with her. No, that's another no, thing, no. Isn't it? So that this happens, and then he goes to the diner where Janet's yeah. working, and he's like, oh. And he, that's when he's like, oh, I know what's going on. I'm hallucinating. Yeah. And uh, she goes back to start. Um, well, that the, the first thing we meet, Janet, she's done his fucking homework. Yeah. And he's, you know, you're like, I don't like this dynamic. This is a little bit of coercive control here, Janet. Yes, <laughs> totally. They set him up as a bit of a douche, actually, and then expect yeah. you to follow him and be behind him the whole way. But you are, because like in those days, it was okay to be a perpetrator. It was that's actually true. sort of like rebels. It's like, this is how you control your woman. <laughs> Like, yeah, you're so right. How is that normal? And she's like, oh, please love me. Yeah, and we're meant to go, oh, they've got a gorgeous set up there. That's the yeah, way to do I it. That's lovely. They're meant to be together. And like, there's a moment when they're being chased by that, the, the henchman. The orderly, and, yeah. Yeah, the orderly. And then they're like, yeah, let's make out. <laughs> That's very strange, isn't it? Strange. <laughs> In a classroom. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, if you were being chased by an orderly with an axe. And you've also just... seen a... A, a living killer brain yeah, trauma yeah. immediate trauma you've seen a lot of and you've seen like people being sawn in half and you've seen yes. yeah someone have their head decapitated your anxiety level is not thinking do you know what i really could do with a bone right now like <laughs> this, this is the most romantic moment in my life like seeing you today all those murders we've seen today together i just feel really close to you and like god i'm like i'm wet i'm wet i just i need to have sex like they are like it's a concerning dynamic isn't it if that's what they're feeling 100 percent. so i'm kind of like our protagonists are a little bit sick they're people of interest for sure 100 percent. they need a little bit of care <laughs> <laughs> this whole hallucination thing it's just uh, having the premise that it's based around hallucinations that's another thing where they can throw any shit they want and Anything. not have to explain it yeah it's like it's what just... effects can we do great we'll put it in that will be hallucination sequence yeah yeah someone's <laughs> definitely popped in and just going it's okay it'll be the hallucination scene it'll be fine we'll just yeah. uh, we'll cut to the brain always yeah. and then that, what, that's can, great. what like, effect can you do what effect yeah. can you do i can make uh, a coffee pot flow over and spurt right we'll put it in and that'll be a hallucination scene because that happens in the diner yeah. and then cool. cut to the brain great great more brain um, <laughs> what this film needs is more brain face 100 oh, percent yeah. Right. yeah that's yeah I think that, yeah, we need a few more in there. Just pepper it throughout. Yeah, at least seven brain cells. Just, and with a triangle. We uh, yes, I love yes. that triangle. Yeah, the triangle. Right. Yeah, What's you get the these subliminal <laughs> subliminal shots of the brain. Yeah, and it's yeah, it's in like a triangle, like it's a poster, or like a, like a poster, it's uh, like flashing the. Yeah, obviously that is the post. That must have been. Yeah, the yeah, it is. Is it? Of course it is. But like, why would you put your merch in your film? Like, I don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> Yeah, it breaks the fourth wall somewhat. It that. completely does. Because like, they've obviously like they've seen the, that poster advertised 
Like yeah. it, this isn't we're going we're going back in time now. Let me take you back. It was it was <laughs> November the fourth, nineteen eighty eight. Christmas was on the way. We were just walking to the <laughs> cinema and we saw the poster, yeah. and then you're watching the film, and the poster's being like at least seven times. <laughs> but That's it's kind of the wrong way around, that isn't it? Because yeah. you're already seeing the film; they don't need to advertise it anymore. No, you're like I, I'm watching it. No, are you though? Are you? <laughs> Imagine like with the Jurassic Park, like constantly, like the poster. <laughs> that would just really freak you out. Like, are we, are we watching? You think you're watching a trailer? It kind of it breaks it, doesn't it? Yes, Fucking idiot. it is very strange. Um, <laughs> but they, yeah, they can get away with all of that with this hallucination thing. Um, yeah. And he's Jim's been put in a right. He's been put put in a, a padded white room, which is really short lived isolation because another patient just breaks in and goes, "Hey, let's swap. I'll pretend I'm you. You go out and pretend you're me." Yeah. And he goes, "Okay." <laughs> leaves it's, it's really like yeah it's a really odd there's a lot of people lining up and it's like follow the line the white line so then we do a lovely long pan on the white mm. line because we don't know what a white line is we have to be, <laughs> you know like, what's a white line 30 like, seconds on that please really got to let the audience know what that is yes like, it can't um, just be a loose reference we need to t- show them what we're talking show about them and hold it hold <laughs> Oh, he he stumbles across uh, the lab room where the brain is. The door isn't locked. It's slightly ajar, no. actually. So they're not yeah. really protecting this. And there's a wonderful moment where Dr. Blake uh, gives us some great exposition. I think I've written it down. Uh, and yeah. he says something like, oh, the brain's increased size means it can now reach further brain waves to the audience on TV. <laughs> But it must actually now keep expanding or it'll die. So it needs to be fed. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. I mean, yeah, Who are you telling that to? I mean, he just sounds like a commissioner because all he gives a shit about is like, well, <laughs> we're going to go national. Well, now we're going to go worldwide. And it's yes. like, it's not even taking, like, it's about the, the network and the TV show, but it's not necessarily like he's not an evil man because you're not, usually they're like that those kind of characters, they want to destroy the world. They'd be a bit more elucidate what they're doing. He doesn't really tell you what he's doing. No, like, what's the end game? What, yeah, what is the end game? Why are you doing this? Do you want to control the world? And and why? Yeah. And what? And whom? Like, yeah, who yeah, are well, you? Exactly. And that's a really good point, actually, because what is, what's the overall, what's he actually trying to achieve by the end? The entire world? What does he do once the entire world's listening to him? That's boring. Yeah, and that's I, the I end of the human... Re- I don't know. I don't understand his arc. And yet he's like one of the lead characters. <laughs> he's just like, what, what's your journey? I don't yeah. know what his journey is. No. It's insane. No. Only that like like 10 minutes before he dies, we realise he's an alien. <laughs> yes. Right. And he, he, he has green blood. And you're like, okay, great. <laughs> right. I think okay, Stan that's going. in art department have to... had loads of green gunk. And he's like, please <laughs> let me use it. Yeah. Please. <laughs> It's one of those. Hundred percent. They get and then they get away with by going. Huh, no answers for you. Uh, there's a great bit of dialogue <laughs> with uh, Janet, and because Janet, oh, he's, he's also got his friend Willie, um, who, and they're trying to break into the facility. And there's this bit yeah. of dialogue when they get in that I also wrote down. This is it. verbatim. He goes, "We're never going to find him, Janet." She says, "We have to, Willie," and he says, "What do you mean we have to?" And she says, "I don't know." <laughs> It feels to me like that was written on the fly because like they needed a bit of dialogue and a bit of high stakes yeah. at this point. So they came up with, we'll never find him. What do you mean we won't find him? I don't know. I don't <laughs> What's know. What's he talking about? We can't give anything away yet. We have to keep them under suspense. Like everyone's just, under mind control. Yeah, it's such a non-exchange. <laughs> Uh, but then brilliant. anyway, he just happens to rock up behind him and go, hey, guys, I'm glad you're here. And the brain eats Willy. Of course, of course, because Willy's a horny guy. So anyone, yeah. you know, got to eat them. I just don't understand how people can get away with that dialogue. Like, <laughs> shocking. every time I write something and I send it to producers, like, they, they, it gets ripped apart. It's like you can't right. get away with shit writing. It just doesn't happen unless you make it spec. And I suggest this film is spec. Like, I, I, I don't believe a production company pays for this. This I is know, a, I'm pr- a passion project. For sure. I think it was all, all hands on dick. All hands on dick? <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before. That's not the first time I made that mistake. All hands oh. on deck and dick, I think it was. And then it was like, anyone want to distribute this? <laughs> we made this. Yeah. I think they made it in 12 days or something. Do you think they believe in mind control and that the film is actually controlling audiences as well oh that's you think it's that that's what they tried to well actually the director edward hunt he directed another film in 1981 (laughs) uh called bloody birthday and that is all about (laughs) 
I know. Right. But it's a similar theme because it's about a bunch of kids. And I think they were born during an eclipse. And then like 15 years later, they all suddenly switch and start killing people. So this theme of ma- mass hypnosis or connected brains. Or like teenagers murdering. So he obviously <laughs> hates teenagers or has a m- yeah. deep mistrust of them. And believes yeah, they're like, all connected and trying to, try to kill yeah. us all. I mean, this is a film. If you know any con- conspiracy theorists, this is a film for them. They would totally. eat this up. They'd absolutely, yeah, they'd be like, 100%. It's absolutely Forrest in there, isn't it? Johnson is Dr. Blake. Like, yeah, some yeah. conspiracy theory stuff, especially all the like, oh, we're all being controlled by the TV. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. Have we gone past the bit? Oh, no, I think it's now when, <laughs> so Janet and Jim, they escape uh, and they get arrested and then the yes. orderly comes up and chops off the, the policeman's yeah. head. Yeah. <laughs> Which just happened. Like, you're just... And they're, they're so there he's going, a murderer. He's, like, he's, he's... That's... He has no qualms about that. It's no. not like he just needs to get them back. He chops off a police officer's head. Yeah. What is this place? And how? And head, is he an alien? He's flying. Yes. But, like, the physics of that, that wouldn't happen. The head <laughs> wouldn't do that. It would just go... Like, yeah, off to the ground. Off to the ground. But, but then, so how did Dr. Blake find these people willing to kill for him? Are they aliens too? Or what? Mind control. Yeah. There you go. Is it mind control? Yeah, it is mind control. That's what it is. But, I, but that said, here's the thing. When he punches, when Jim punches uh, Dr. Blake's face off, yes. the whole audience is not under mind control anymore. But yet the orderly still is. Yeah. Doesn't make sense that, does it? So then the orderly has a is moment. a psychopath. Just a psychopath that he's hired. So he is on his own, just a psycho. Right. And he's, and, he's and then Dr. The Blake's like, oh, so you're a killer naturally. You're a natural yeah. killer. I will pay you to do what you love. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 100%. So he's just doing his own thing. This is his joy. He loves to kill. Yeah. Like, fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. If you do what you love and get paid for it, then. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And he really loves to wear white, which is, you know, a mm-hmm. bit of a tricky color if you like to kill. Um, and there's <laughs> no blood stains on him. Not a sprinkle. Not even with like the axe and no. there would have been splashback. I'd, I wonder if that's in, especially in the 80s, during this time, a lot of these certification, the more blood you have, the higher rating of film you get. I don't There's know. Hardly if any blood. That. The only blood you really see is when his school teacher, who then looks like a yardie in his garden, like making oh, yes. that decking. You're like, it took a while for me to go, that's his school teacher. But he looks like a builder when he um his wife saws him his guts. Oh yeah, she because she's been a brainwashed. Bit of, a bit of blood after the fact. You don't see it spray up at all. No. So maybe there's a thing. And then the crying teddy bear. But that's like that's the only time you see a bit of red. Yeah, that's right. And the and the and then we get the alien blood, which is obviously gray. And, yeah. Yeah. They've um. He so maybe there's a now. thing with that, like because there would be with all those deaths, they'd be there, it would be very gory. You'd be I think it's to floor. do with class. Yeah, definitely to do with classification there. Because if you don't yeah. put blood in, and if you put black or green, um, if you give characters black or green blood, it doesn't get classed in the same way as red oh, blood. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. So I reckon that's probably what they're doing. So they can get more people to see it by having not getting an X rating or something like that. Oh, that's, I see. that's probably it. That, or they just didn't have any fake blood. Um, okay, but they yeah. uh, they break into the school, and I think yeah, this is where he's very switched on is our gym, and he says, yeah. ah, I got a feeling if we kill the brain then then it'll all sort out and all the people won't be zombies by the way they're also casually calling it the brain now like that's a standard opponent yeah. like acceptable yeah. it's the brain yeah like, the brain well, wh- whose brain no it's what just brain? the brain yeah no, the brain. brain no it's the brain it's a sentient being it lives on its own but you're like have you been introduced who yeah. told you it was called the brain like yeah, yeah she's accepting the way he's talking about it as well it's like we killed yeah. the brain and she's like right called the brain what? Like I'm just thinking about when I'm going to change into my fabulous outfit. So. Yeah, like, that's, that's what it is. Whole, like, that's she doesn't have questions. No, like, not at all. She just goes along with it. And, and uh, then gets yeah, really well, she gets on. hypnotized at, because they have, as you say, they decide to have sex. Uh, yeah. And then she gets hypnotized. He wakes up after a nightmare. He wakes up and she's watching watching Dr. Blake on the TV. And so she even though he's told stops. her don't yes. watch TV. Yes, she's an absolute moron. She's turned it on. Yeah, the TV. She's like, oh, you know what? I could do some cartoons after set. Yeah, that's what it was. Always. And then she hit the wrong channel. She hit the wrong channel. And then and so he's talking about James. Saying that he's a murderer and telling everyone if they see him to capture him, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And the cops turn up at the school. Now there's, 
he escapes. So Jim escapes in a car and there's this car chase and it goes on for <laughs> Ever. I think it's in real time, like however yeah. long it takes to get from the school to the lab. They I mean, filmed the dare that. chase was ridiculous as well. <laughs> like the, uh, the, the orderly is, you know, he's a big guy. He's a big guy. Yeah. But yeah. the sound effects of his feet running <laughs> are so dainty. You're like, that's not it. it it's like, <laughs> it's not not his feet at all. <laughs> do we, do we, do we, do we, do we? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Like, it, like, kills all the fear. She's like, there's a ballerina chasing after James. But he's huge. Yeah, that would be a thump. He's a thump. It would have been that, 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 but they obviously didn't get it, grab it in the sound. So they're like, we need That's what it steps. is. Foley. Um, yeah, Foley. Foley, <laughs> come on, can you do the steps? Of course. <laughs> it's this 14 year old girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 14 year old ballerina they've got. That's not his, that is not his, his uh, footprint sound. That's not his sound. The, and the, oh, I like, we see now how the, <laughs> how the brain communicates with Dr. Blake because it, it, we get some more crisp exposition here. So Dr. Blake says, hmm, in about five minutes, 20 million people are going to be watching the show and you can send your super strong brainwaves out to all of them. And the brain's communicated back by using a computer screen with text, but saying stuff like, ha ha, that fool Jim thinks he can stop us. <laughs> but it's like, it's, well, it's like a silent you movie. Yeah. You know a silent movie where you see the brain that it cuts to the, the text. I, was, I mean, they he... should have done that straight away, like to make it a thing, because you can't just plonk it in at the last minute. It's like, that is such a weird thing. You're either going to, you know, you're either going to have a dog with subtitles, do it straight yeah. away. You can't yeah, yeah. do it at the end. It's 10 weird. minutes before the end. No, it's a real cop. It's that smacks of a writer going, I've, I've run out of pages. <laughs> I, like they are really running hard at the end to finish this fucking film. Because it's really slow, and I'm like, this is yeah. this is really slow. And Come at the on. end, they're like, oh, shit, 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 we've got to finish it in five pages. Fuck! <laughs> it just it ends so quickly. Yeah, and this weird. this run up now, everything's happening. Yeah, so you've got yeah. this is where um, Janet's tied up in a freezer with some dead bodies. Uh, Jim, all the the zombie people from the town, they're all coming towards the lab. Um, then he's Dr. Blake started the broadcast of the final one that goes out to 20 million. Then Jim comes and he knocks his head off, as you say. Green yeah, news comes just out. He touches him one time and his whole head pops off. <laughs> and but then they do um all sort of start to turn back to normal, all the people that are watching. So it's not defeat the brain and everything will be back to normal. It's defeat hey, Dr. Dr. Blake, yeah. Whatever his name is, yeah. That theory was completely pointless. Uh, yeah. and then you've got this final massive showdown. Well, there's, first the of all, there's the, and the, with the massive the sweaty brain. Yes, yes, and uh, yeah, they run into the brain, and it's chasing and then the brain them. eats the orderly. <laughs> yes, so I don't understand that because they were working together before. Together, but the brain, <laughs> the brain's just an animal. Like, like the brain doesn't care. Yeah, I don't know what it's doing now because, well, it, also it gets... at the end, it's like against uh, James and, and Janet, and he's literally like throwing spatulas at it like it looks like he's in a kitchen store yes it's just like there's nothing and, and then it, and, and it's like it's it's not moving it's like it's run out of its extension lead and it's yes it's just a couple of inches away from them but it can't get to them and for Janet, some at one reason point, like she's screaming so much but because it goes on so long she's long she's kind of get all, the actress almost gets bored and kind of stops and it's like, ah! like she stops, has these moments where she literally just like takes herself out. She's not in the scene at all. It's she brilliant. checks out. She completely checks out. And then he just grabs this massive pe- like call back to the sodium at the beginning and just shoves it in his face. And then bang, the, the brain explodes like that. You're like, oh, r- but I thought it only has a reaction in water. Oh, yes. Well, you did say it was very wet brain. <laughs> well, it, ah, there you go. That's, that's why. why it, and that's why it was always having to be drippy wet. Gosh, maybe okay. they have thought yeah, about this more. actually quite clever. <laughs> <laughs> they really planned it out. But, like, this is, for me, is the worst because it's like, right, the brain explodes, cuts mm-hmm. straight to James's kitchen, and his dad walks, you know, his mum walks and goes, hey, you've been accepted to Princeton. <laughs> and, yes. like, and that's it. He's that's like, the oh. end. That's of the, the film there's and no then, aftermath and then it cuts to the triangle brain with a warning underneath like do not use sodium at home <laughs> it's 
<laughs> if you have a giant brain coming to your face, please don't use sodium. Like, you have to do an actual disclaimer, yeah. Yes. Saying, oh, it's a dramatic representation. Combining sodium and water is very dangerous. Yeah, you're like, oh, the likelihood of a massive TV brain coming towards me and me yeah. thinking, you know what, I better get some. I've got my axe already. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, yeah. Got your sodium. Got my sodium. But, um, it's really anticlimactic because there's no aftermath of the after the brain exploding. Everything's back to normal. No one's yeah. acting traumatized from the parents aren't traumatized that they woke up in a tv studio that no. they didn't plan in the middle of a lab that they didn't yeah. plan to go to usually they, people are dead there's yeah. bits of brain everywhere there's no residual trauma from this it's back to normal everything's good in the world you usually in these scenes like on these scenarios you have the aftermath scene where like loads of there's loads of police in there yeah, and, yeah. and people going hey you did a good job there james like like yeah. thank you you always thank the hero and yeah. like there was no thanking the hero of wrapping this up and like you know you did this because you saved uh, uh, uh and like yeah. like explaining what he had actually saved and who he'd saved you don't even see anyone you just go back to this really stark kitchen with no life and then as soon as james walks out of the kitchen from his parents his parents have no communication with each other it's like they just look at each other and they're like ah nothing no script no dialogue but it's like like they're on they're literally on pause it's so weird it's like just the camera should have moved with james and no, just no. We'll stay on the inanimate, like <laughs> people not talking or moving. It's like an episode of Acorn Ant- Antiques. They're literally <gasps> like that. They're stuck. Just stuck. They're stuck. You're right. And he leaves frame, and they stay on they're it for frame. a bit. It's like no, no, no. But you're going. If you're, if like, stay on there. If they're going to say something, but fucking move. Like, cut, <laughs> like go. This is awful. <laughs> Actual dead air. What are you doing? They're like. I don't have any lines. Literally, like you could see the actress in a, yeah. you know, you have that moment of a, I don't, but it's not my line. But it's aware like, that they're still rolling. So, yeah, uh. yeah. I'm in the scene, I'm in the scene, but I don't have any lines. I'll move my, my hand. Like, <laughs> that. We've got my we've spoon. Those, but we've all had those eggy moments where, <laughs> like, the camera's still on you, or you should have a line. Your character would speak, but you've but not, it's been not been written. A line. Yes. It's not been written, but you have this like facial reaction because you're in the scene but you have nothing to say and it's the worst thing ever like it's happening I know exactly many what you times. mean I hate but it it's awful because you just look hammy or awkward you're like well, obviously that character would say something and then you, well, yeah, sometimes you make a really bold choice which is the wrong thing by making a really big facial reaction to yes. what's going on and then that's even worse than just it's literally awful. doing nothing just do nothing just always do nothing or like sometimes I try and improvise and and then that's just a disaster you're like oh because yeah. you right, don't have to go from the top it. because Kerry ruined yeah. that one <laughs> yeah but you don't want to commit to, to actually saying a sentence so you just make like weird noises so you know oh, brr, <laughs> <laughs> but it's all right. it's like, I didn't do anything I just reacted <laughs> 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 like, I would have I, I would have preferred if she'd done that at the end of this yeah, if, it literally too. if the end of this film <laughs> was those two sat and then the wife just go oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, would have, that would have been the button <laughs> <laughs> like, and then the shot of the brain done yeah yeah brain. and the disclaimer <laughs> and then the you disclaimer. needed the disclaimer <clears throat> like mm. I think every horror movie I've n- I've never actually seen ever a film but I love that that is the disclaimer not by the way P- chopping people's heads off is really bad. Don't go and yeah. do that. It's don't, like don't, don't fuck don't, with like, sodium. Yeah, don't. Su- yeah, like sodium's really bad, but like you know, don't don't play around with axes or saws for that matter. Like, <laughs> yes. there's quite a lot of yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, can yeah. I just say though? Um, I-, I always worry when people listen to this podcast. They hear me just sit and rip through a film, but it's in the most endearing way because I have I've had more enjoyment watching this film and talking about this film with you than I would watching just a, a fine film. I don't like films that are, yeah, that was fine. That was good. It needs to be absolutely dreadful or absolutely yeah. brilliant to elicit a proper reaction from me. Yeah. And so this is one of my favourite things that I've seen this year. And so it's from oh, such really? a place of love oh, talking about it like this. But I, I think really shit films, if you're a writer, you have to watch awful films because they really teach you how to write. Like right. I, I learned so much more and it and it really kind of like 
fires me up to go, well, if that was made, I might actually have a chance than watching yeah. something epic. Because when I watched like, you know, a nomad land, which was beautiful and it was so nuanced, I literally like want to run into my bedroom and not move because I'm like, I can't write that. Can't do this. No, yeah. but when I I'm watching the brain, I'm like, I've literally written a treatment after watching this. I was like, I've been I've had a film idea in my brain for like six years. And then watching that, I was like, I literally took a whole morning and I wrote the treatment out. I was like, I've done it. No so way. I have to thank you oh. if you watch this film because it's like made me go, do you know what? That idea that I had, it's actually really good. So right. Something. And I suppose, yeah, yeah sort of be, the, breaking it down the way we did and saying, pointing out, look, there's a massive structure flaw here or this and this and this. The stuff that might be when you're doing what you're doing, might be easily overlooked it makes you go oh I do need to make sure that thread's there yeah. or that you know yeah. what's missing and what you have to guide your audience because they're, they're going on a journey with you so they they want to follow you they want you to win so you have to let them and you'll have to you have to let them unpick the code as well so the exposition is like don't do that <laughs> like let us figure it out let us like win the board game as it were like that's that's one of the great things especially with cons like conspiracy theories or like murder mysteries you as an audience you want to solve it first before totally. the protagonist mm -hmm. and then you're like you feel better than the, you know because they yeah, always yeah. give you those little teeny tiny clues but like don't do it straight away because it's like oh but with this film there was none of that though. well, well i don't like, think they knew themselves did they no. <laughs> how to explain a lot of this stuff but the thing is what they did was put out a film that people like me I want to see crappy monsters I want to, to just yeah. just disappear for an hour and a half in the most slocky trashy shitty mess have you and ever it, seen I did. oh my god have you ever seen Vampire's Kiss Nick Cage Vampire's Kiss no Vampire's I don't think Kiss. I have is it all right this is oh my god but it's fucking brilliant though You're I awful. think you all love it like you have to do a podcast on it because yeah it's, it's it's when Nicolas Cage was like doing art house films in the 80s. Yeah. So it's a young Nick Cage. It's a bold Nick Cage. I, mean, I can picture the cover bold, actually. Brilliant. It's a psychological thriller. You're like, is he having, um, is he schizophrenic or is this real? One of them. It, it's one of them. But it's it's so heightened and there's lots of holes. But at the time I found it when I was 16 and I had a very deep crush on Nicolas Cage. So when I was 16, I thought a vampire's kiss was fucking like this the should dogs. be Oscar. like it was the dog bollocks, dog yeah. bollocks. But um, now the dog bollocks, I like that. The dog, just singular. The dog bollocks. <laughs> just the dog bollocks. Dog bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> but now this, I think you hundred percent have to do an episode. All right, because it I'm on it. Your brand because he's he's just brilliant to just analyze Nicholas Cage's. Oh, always. I, it, oh. He, I've never seen choices made uh the way Nicolas Cage makes choices it's yeah. fascinating every yeah. time I'm like oh wow that's that came out of left field didn't yeah didn't think anyone but would it, ever make he, that kind of choice no it's amazing though he commits to it he's an absolute clown and I love mm. that about him me too I, I can't stand it when you see an underpowered performance that is so real it's you're barely moving your face I totally. hate that kind of act understated kind of think, and yeah oh my god it's awful because when you're having chats with people, with people you love, they move their hands. Some people it's are animated. quite theatrical. Yes. And, and there's a lot of acting that's so real, realistic. It's not real. Yeah, like, I know what you mean. That really understated and just minimal. They're really subtle and like barely moving their faces. And it's all yeah. in their eyes. And I just, I, I, if that continues, I will be out of work. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. No, I'm not doing it. I'm going to check that out. I he's Nicholas Cage has done a lot of like horror slash genre yeah. films recently. Like he's done these films Color Out of Space, Mandy, yeah. uh Willy's Wonderland and he's really on that uh track at the moment. Uh so yeah, I'll check that out. Life. He's he's clever to do horror right now because it's like he'll that, because people rewatch horrors, don't they? Yeah. But you and if you become really... a, a genre icon yeah. then you, you're sorted. Horror Christmas. That's where I'm gonna go that's that's the market 100 yeah Money get on it life. yeah totally uh, well listen that was so much fun I honestly <laughs> had the best time and it's oh, really good. it was really fun to actually cover a film that I hadn't seen either but I it's been on my radar for so long and I was like it's got to and I've seen the trailer and I was like I can't 
this has got to happen. And then what I love doing is when I, I've got a guest who said they'll come on, I try and picture them watching a film. I try and picture them. That's how I choose. And I hadn't seen yeah. this, but just the trailer, I was like, I can just imagine Kerry going, huh? Yeah. <laughs> me? Sorry? <laughs> yeah. I turned it on. And like my little kids, like, I was like, not for you. Not for you. <laughs> no, no, no. Turn around. Uh, but thank you so much. I've had a brilliant time. Um, oh, good. It's nice seeing your face, your lovely, happy I know. face. All right, my love. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to my pal Kerry Howard for cracking me up and sitting through the brain. What a brilliant guest. As I said, next week for our penultimate episode, I'll be chatting to Ursula Carlson about Creepazoids, a 70-minute trash to piece. Find Brain Rot on the socials. On Twitter and Letterboxd, it's Stevie's Brain Rot. On Instagram, it's Brain Rot Pod. And if you want to support the show and get access to bonus content and merch, as I said earlier, go to patreon.com forward slash flash. And if you want to support the show and get access to bonus content and merch, as I said earlier, go to patreon.com forward slash Stevie's Brain Rot. And do check out the merch store itself. We have a new range of rainbow tees and tank tops and stickers to celebrate Pride Month in June. And 25% of all proceeds will be donated to Stonewall, an organisation close to my heart and brain. Uh, to do that, go to steviesbrainrot.com. All right then, you stinking rotters. See you next week. Toodles! <laughs> <laughs>